Welcome back. As we promised, we are going to start with the uh, uh, state's success in uh, attracting more foreign investments and particularly in the field of industry in various industrial domains, by the way. To shed more light on this, we are very much delighted to have with us via phone His Excellency, Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi, former Assistant Foreign Minister and our economic expert. Thank you very much for being with us, sir, and a very good morning. Good morning. It's my pleasure. Uh, sir, let's start immediately with a very general question regarding the Egyptian efforts exerted to attract more foreign investments and particularly in the field of industry. How do you see the importance of this, particularly in this uh, critical timing where the whole world is suffering from global economic changes and challenges in the same time? This is very, very important because Egypt is uh, uh, an economy of highly diversified uh, type, type of economy. We have industry, we have agriculture, we have services. We, we are a country of services and we give lots of, and lots of services. Yeah. Now, our, uh, in, increasing our production of agriculture is limited by the water. Yeah. So we have unlimited opportunity in order to increase our industrial product. Uh, and we have many good examples in many uh, places, like the furniture in the Meta, like the uh, carpets in uh, Cairo and in uh, Upper Egypt. We, we have many uh, types of uh, good uh, uh, industrial products, which, is can, which can compete in the international market, especially the cotton industry. So we have to expand this, and in, in this, Part of our time, uh, we, we, we are concentrating on uh, industries which need more and more uh, workers because we, we have the challenge of making all our people working and give opportunity to our young people to work uh, because we, we, we still have a surplus of unemployed uh, young generation. In the same time that we are qualifying our cadres, we are qualifying our youth to be able to join uh, these mega projects and to prove that uh, the Egyptian worker, the, the, the Egyptian technician, uh, the Egyptian uh, employee in general is one of a kind and can shoulder this responsibility. But, sir, let me focus a little bit on industry this time and speaking about uh, the all the time repetition of these statements from all top executives, from the president himself to uh, all ministers or top executives in general. Egypt is exerting the utmost efforts to, uh, to introduce all incentives and facilitations to investors, whether Egyptian, Arabs or foreigners, to make sure that all obstacles on the way are going to be eliminated to prepare the environment for attracting more and more. How do you see the word incentive, uh, as you've kindly mentioned, competitiveness, facilitation, tax evasion, you name it? We have here many, many challenges. First, we want to uh, convince the mass media and the public opinion that we need foreign direct investment because some people are questioning the uh, reason or the uh, result of foreign direct investment. Why we need foreign direct investment? Because we need to uh, grow our uh, products by at least 7% to cover the increase in population. And mm. this needs to invest 30% of our income. Our savings are half of this sum. We, we save only 15% of our income. Mm. So we need to cover the, the gap between our savings and our aim for investment. How? Two ways. Either we borrow, and borrowing is annoying us a little bit, or we invite in, uh, investors, either Egyptians living abroad, and by the way, they are investing abroad by billions of dollars, mm. uh, according to the IMF, or the Arabs, because they are our neighbors, and we have uh, many things in common to share, or, uh, of course, European, American, Japanese, because they come not only with money, but with experience and technology. 
this was my coming study. question, sir. If you permit me to interrupt here, I beg your pardon, because I wanted to focus on what you have just said, technology transfer as another side of the coin, which we should take care of. Because without technology transfer, particularly in the field of industry, it will not work. Of course, yes. Because, because m m many new industries are uh, in the field. Take now the uh, computer technology, the, uh, the phones and uh, the, the, uh, all, all this series of production. It needs technology, and if we, 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 if we want to uh, technology transfer, we have to prepare ourselves by training, and we have many programs to train our young people to, uh, to, to, to be able to face such a challenge. Yeah. Technology doesn't come by itself. It comes to those who are ready and able to understand what they are doing. Yeah. Um, yesterday, there was an important tour by Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Medbouli in a number of pharmaceutical industry um, firms or uh, factories. And uh, there was also a roundtable uh, discussion in London in which uh, ministers of finance and investments participated. And uh, they focused on, um, on the, uh, ma the major developments we achieved in the field of developing our infrastructure. And to make sure that the last decade in a specific witnessed a leap in this regard, to make sure that this is also going to be another source of attraction for investors and particularly in the industrial domain. If you want to elaborate on that, sir. Yes, and I am glad to tell you that our uh, repetition and our history, especially in the medicine industry, is very good. The Egyptian medicine is very uh, well known. And now we have to come back to this industry and to make it much more productive. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a big history in the field of textile and garments where we are competing highly in the European market and in the United States. Take the furniture also, and we are exporting furniture to the Gulf states, but we are not doing enough. Uh, a city like Damietta, which is producing furniture, producing uh, textile, producing uh, uh, ma 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 many, many production, uh, the Damietta example, and in Asyut also, we have to follow these examples. But still we have to answer some questions that we have to make our bureaucracy much more able to finish the, the challenge, to finish the work immediately. Our banking system needs to be ameliorated and up to the Basel I, Basel II, Basel III. And we are doing a very good efforts to, com to, to uh, get the experience of uh, the, the Central Bank of Europe, for instance, which had a twinning program. I, I, I personally helped that uh, some years ago to help our banking system in general, and especially the Central Bank of Egypt. Mm -hmm. we, we have to make our transport system much more able to do the job. That, that answers the question, why we are making all these roads and all these bridges, we need it. We need our ports to be able to receive uh, mammoth tankers and to uh, make it uh, finishing its job in a few hours, mm -hmm. not days, not weeks. Many things are uh, on, on all our attention, and we have to deal with all these uh, challenges. And I think we are, we are, we are up to it. We, we can do it. And we have to believe that we, Egypt uh, is one country uh, which is uh, able to do all these challenges. And we already started with that, sir, and implemented that on the ground and in, in many occasions and in many meetings uh, between um, presided over by the head of the state and the prime minister or, and the ministers of our economic circle, uh, to be accurate. He is all the time focusing on what you have just said, to eliminate bureaucracy, to uh, 
uh, expand the golden license initiative to make sure that it's not going to take time to, con to uh, finish or to finalize all the uh, paperwork, if I may call it this way. But I'd like to focus also, sir, on another pivotal issue, which is localizing industry via, lose, via using our local components and to make sure that our local component is going to occupy or to have the lion's share of our uh, industries in general. How do you see the importance of using our local components and to make sure that um, it's going to be one of the main privileges we have? You are hitting here a very important point. Because if you don't use your local input, then it is not Egyptian what you are making. Uh, in order to export your product and in order to benefit from the free trade areas which we establish with Europe, with Africa and the Arab world, you have to cover the component by Egyptian uh, resources. If you import all the components, then it's not Egyptian, and it, it, it will not uh, have the ability to be exempted from custom duties. Uh, take the car industry. If you do not produce a motor and they say, hey, then it's not Egyptian car at all. Uh, and, and many, many examples like that. Mm -hmm. You have to, uh, to make sure that your exports of garments is made of Egyptian textile and yarn. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Egyptian uh, component is essential to, to be able to be exempted from uh, trade barriers and custom duties. Yeah, amen to that. Uh, also, sir, uh, let's take a quick look at the uh, very fruitful results of the visit of Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Madbouli to Saudi Arabia last week as he met with uh, uh, Ministers of Finance, of Investment, um, uh, Majid Al Qasabi, Khalid Al Falah, I mean, top. Um, uh, executives there in Saudi Arabia and uh, they, um, they agreed on having an agreement or a deal uh, to uh, regulate or to make uh, rules to um, facilitate the uh, matter or, or the field in front of Saudi investors despite the fact that Egypt is among the largest five uh, countries where uh, Saudi investors are uh, having uh, their investments here but um, even this number is not meeting our ambitions. Even this number is not our ceiling and we want to do more. How to see this, how to see being one of the five big countries uh, to enjoy uh, the uh, Saudi investments and uh, uh, these regulations which were agreed upon? Yes, we have a lot to be done here. And when they declared that uh, the Saudis will add to their investments in Egypt, Five billion dollars. I said this is not enough. Mm. It is good, but not enough. The Arab, the whole Arab world is investing abroad by 1,800 billion dollars mm. out of the Arab world. In the Arab world, it is only 60. So it is less than five percent of our ability. The, the, this challenge must uh, push us in order to satisfy the investor, and we have to listen to the investors to see what are the obstacles, mm -hmm. how many hours he has to, to spend uh, since he put the first $100 million in the bank until he gets the first million dollars as uh, uh, revenues. Mm -hmm. Th this is a big challenge here. So uh, time is money and we have, uh, I am glad that uh, our president since early years of his presidency, he, he, he made many conferences with the businessmen to listen because they have a lot to ask. They have a lot to tell us to, to what to do and what to, uh, satisfy, how to satisfy the needs of an investor. Yeah. But the good news is that still Egypt is one of the largest Arab countries absorbing uh, foreign direct investment, but still not enough. Yeah. Uh, sir, among the topics which were discussed in uh, the uh, Premier's visit to Saudi Arabia is to invest in, particularly in the field of renewable energy and mineral wealth. 
how do you see um, uh, those two fields in specific as very promising and um, can be more stories of success implemented on the ground and be a win-win situation for both countries? We have uh, very strong uh, uh, ability to enlarge our uh, capacity to produce energy, whether oil or gas or electricity. Mm. And we have with the Saudis the uh, big project which is com combining and connecting the electric net. We shall uh, com uh, connect the electric net from Baghdad in the east up to Casablanca and the West. Here, without adding any machines, we can uh, save 30% of our energy, and we, we are able to export it even to Europe mm. because of the lack, uh, the, the difference in timing. When uh, the, the Iraqis put off the light at midnight, it is still at 10 o'clock in Cairo. We need this electricity, so we take it. So. And when we put off the light at midnight, it is still at 10 o'clock in Casablanca and so on. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the electric net also is one beautiful uh, example of how the Arabs can cooperate in, in this field of energy. Take also the gas. We are a big importer of gas because we have two factories to liquidate the gas. Mm -hmm. One in the midst, the other in Rashid, where we can liquidate the gas. And here is a highly value-added uh, technology and industry. So we import gas from all our neighbors and export it in, in a sort of liquid to Europe and to our neighbors also. Yeah. Many, many opportunities are there. Uh, it needs a lot of uh, work and a lot of energy and finance. Yes, sir. And joining uh, economic groups like BRICS, for example, I think also it's going to be one of the platforms or um, another way to attract more direct, inv um, direct foreign investments, particularly when it comes to uh, Russia and China. As uh, they know, uh, do have the industrial zones in the Suez Canal economic zone, and uh, they are enjoying all the uh, facilitations. They are uh, practicing their job, uh, fortunately, uh, without obstacles on the ground. Um, if you want to elaborate on that too, sir. Yes, here we have several files. Yeah. First, that we are saying that Africa, although it is the poorest continent in the world, still the flow of money from Africa to the developed countries is much more than it receives from this country as a result of its exports or a result of investment from abroad. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, so we are asking the donor countries to come and invest in Africa with the Egyptian experience. So what we call the tripartite cooperation. And we raised this in the Sharm Sheikh conference with Europe. And we, we, we got uh, many, many uh, positive reactions from Japan, from China, and from the European Union. But still, we need much more action in order to make stories of success there. China now is penetrating Africa. We are trying to help them, and uh, I think that the Egyptian uh, experience in Africa is the best in the world, mm -hmm. and also it achieves. It's not, uh, it, do it doesn't cost a lot like uh, other experiences. Mm -hmm. Also, hey. another attraction that we say, if you come and invest in Egypt, this is not the country of 100 million inhabitants. No, we have free trade area with the Arab world. 500 million. We have a free trade area with Africa, 1,200 million. We have a free trade area with Europe, another 500 million. This means that if you produce in Egypt, then you are addressing a, a market of 2,000 million inhabitants. This is great. Sure. Uh, a third dimension, which is the, the, the place, the Suez Canal Zone. We are telling the Chinese, uh, instead of sending your merchandise from Viking to London, it takes a lot of time, come and either you produce it in the Suez Canal Zone, or you make storage also 
in the Suez Canal zone. Mm -hmm. And we, we always give the example of Brazil. If you want to buy Brazilian coffee or Brazilian sugar, you buy it from their storage in Beirut. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go to Rio de Janeiro. Uh, and now many countries are responding positively to this, and they will start to make their small industries in the Suez Canal zone, yeah. or at least to make storage in order to uh, start uh, uh, exporting to the neighbor countries. So, uh, being the gate to Africa, our strategic location, turning the uh, Suez Canal economic zone into uh, an international logistics hub, in addition to our infrastructure which enabled China and Russia only as examples to have industrial zones here. What I mentioned are of the very major factors which are going to continue attracting more direct foreign investments and particularly in the field of industry. True? Yes, of course. And, and we, we, we start to make stories of success. Uh, Russia will start to make story in, in uh, the Suez Canal zone in order also to feed the passing uh, ships with what it needs. Yeah. They need food, they need fuel, they need to repair some ships uh, if it needs to be repaired. Uh, m m many services can be done uh, in, in the Suez Canal, besides, yeah. of course, the possibility of producing in this zone, which is uh, most one of the most successful uh, projects in our whole economic life. And we succeeded in refueling ships with green hydrogen and this was another leap and I think it's not found except in very certain uh, places all over the world but Egypt is always a pioneer. Uh, well, uh, Ambassador Bayoumi, it's all the time uh, a pleasure to have you via phone. You're Thank always you. an added value to our program. Thank you very much for your emphasis and have a very good day. Thank you. We were very much delighted to have with us via phone His Excellency Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi, former Assistant Foreign Minister and our economic expert. Well, right after the short break, we are going to continue the remaining part of our breakfast show, so stay tuned.